I'm Kim Kewen and I work at the Massachusetts College of Art and Design in the Film Department. Today I'd like to introduce one of my favorite tools, the Bolex H16 Reflex Camera. So here we are, we have a Bolex kit. We call it a kit or a package, Bolex package, and it comes with what you need to work um, on your film projects. So we'll open that up and you'll see a Bolex reflex camera. Now this is one of my favorite tools for shooting 16 millimeter film. Another thing that comes in the package is a light meter and three lenses, prime lenses, a 75, a 10, and a 25. This has the information about what's in your kit so you don't forget to bring anything back when you're done. And then we have an exposure time chart. And we'll talk about that again later. Right now, I would like to introduce you to this camera. The Bolex camera is a, a wind camera. It has a spring motor. So when you wind up the camera, give it just a couple of winds here. And that makes it go. You still can use a motor on the camera, which will continually advance um, at 24 frames per second. Now these cameras, some of them are roughly 50 years old, but the great thing about these cameras is with regular maintenance, they continue to work, so they probably work for another 50 years. This camera is an excellent tool for learning 16 millimeter filmmaking, and some of the highlights of why I say that is that it has lots of special effects, such as um, you can do stop motion, one frame at a time. You can do double exposure by rewinding the film in the camera and shooting a second time. You can do slow motion or fast motion. And with a motor, you can do time lapse as well. So I'd like to start to point out all the functions of this camera for you at this time. So like I said, you have the reflex viewfinder. Well, this is called the diopter, and this is called the eyepiece. When you're setting that diopter, you want to be able to focus the diopter so that at the plane of the film, it will be in focus to your eye. Unscrew this. Make sure that you have taken off the cap here so that you can see light through the camera and you'll be able to see the prism or the ground glass. The lever right here and move it in and out until you can see the texture on the ground glass which looks sparkly. Put those little sparkles into focus. Some people think it looks like TV fuzz and then Crank that back down again so that's nice and tight. So another thing I want to show you here is this lever here closes off the light that can come in from the eyepiece. So if your eye is here, you're blocking the light. But if you step away from the camera and it's on a tripod and you're trying to film, you want to close this lever. So you can see the lever is blocking the light just like the light is blocked. When the lever is along the viewfinder, that means the light can get through. So up is closed and down is open. This right here is your footage counter. You want to keep an eye on that. You have a hundred feet. So that way you can keep an eye on how much film you have left. This is your frame counter and you can zero it by using this knob here. That's for each hundred frames and then two frames at a time, you use the rewind spindle. Do a double exposure. You want to remember to zero this so that once you shoot and you, want, and you rewind, you can go back to the exact same spot. Record how many frames you're at and make sure you rewind back to that exact amount of frames. Here you have speeds from 12 frames a second all the way to 64 frames per second. 
Usually regular motion is 24 frames per second. So if you slow it down to 16 or 12, your subject will appear to go faster. If you bring it up to 32, 48 or 64, your subject will appear to be moving in slow motion and you can dial it in anywhere you want to. This knob changes it from instantaneous to timed exposure. Timed exposure would leave the shutter open for the entire time that I hold it and then when I release it, it closes it again. If you're shooting in regular motion like 24 frames per second or slow motion or fast motion, you want to keep it on the eye position, instantaneous. This is a very important lever right here and this is called the variable shutter. This will cut the light. If you have the var variable shutter in this position all the way down to the bottom, no light is getting onto your frame of film, so that's black. When the variable shutter is fully open, you have normal exposure. That's at the red mark. A quarter closed, the exposure is reduced by half a stop. Half closed, the exposure is reduced by a full stop. And fully closed, no light is reaching the film plane. So you can use this to slowly fade to black. If you have it in this position and you look through your eyepiece, you'll see a little triangle in the left-hand corner of your frame. And that will alert you to the fact that that's down. So always check for that little triangle. And if you want it to be there, that's great because you're doing a double exposure or you're trying to cut a little bit of light uh, for various reasons. But if not, you don't want to see that triangle or you want it to be in the up and locked position. If you have too much light, you can cut a little bit using this, or you can put a filter in the filter holder. Let's continue. So right here behind the variable shutter is a little marking that's called the film plane guide mark. So this is the film plane right where that mark goes through that little circle. And that, if you want to measure your focus, is where you measure from. Then you have two little spindles. One is called the coupling spindle for the electric motor. And this is where you would attach your motor. And there's screws here that um, keep it in place. You could attach a sync motor where you would shoot 24 frames per second or you could attach another kind of animation motor where you're filming one frame at a time or doing time lapse. For rewinding your film, if you want to double expose, you could use your coupling spindle for the film rewind handle. Disengage the spring motor to rewind your film. Make sure you bring it to off and put that back to the M. Now there's several reasons for rewinding your film. If you want to double expose, if you shot it with the variable shutter down and it's black and you need to rewind to reshoot it, with the variable shutter up, you can rewind your film. If you want to re-engage the spring wind motor, it's good to not have any wind in the camera. You bring it back to motor and bring that back to stop. And that way you can wind the camera. If you wind it fully, you have about 20 to 30 seconds for a shot. You have your trigger, the ability to do single frame. This is your turret level or turret handle. This is the turret. So and this is the handle that will help you to move the turret. This will rotate, which means you could put three lenses on there and just rotate them rather than changing lenses every time you wanted to change your view. So say you have your three lenses on this camera, but then you want to change lenses. You unlock it using this and this. So that's unlocked. I could turn it and put a different lens in front of the 
shutter and then go back or choose another one. Go back. You want to put your heaviest lens in the safest position and then make sure it's locked. And this is your ground glass and there's your shutter. Great, so that's that part. This is your cap. I'm going to put this cap back on again just to protect that ground glass and we'll turn the bolex around and show you the other side. Filter holder. So if you wanted to put a filter in between the lens and the film to either cut a little light, uh, ND, or correct your color. You always want to keep your filter holder in even if there's no filter because that can let a little light in as well and that would make a light leak onto your film. Here's the door. You just lift up and turn and it will come right off. It's open at O and it's closed at F. So you want to leave it open because if you close it, you can't put it back on and then you get confused. And now we have the inside of the camera. This is an extra daylight spool and it's in this position where you would be taking up your film. So we do need to take up the film so that will be there. But for now, I'm going to take this off and set it aside. And this is your feed spindle, your take up spindle. And this is how to release the daylight spools. This is your cutter right here. And these are your loop formers right here. To lock your loop former, turn the locking knob, they close, and if you push the button, they open back up again. These loop formers want to be closed when you're loading, but then they want to be open when you're filming. This is your pressure plate right here, and that holds the film close to the gate so that when your film is being exposed, it stops for that portion of a second and is exposed in the gate. And this needs to be closed up against the film when you're shooting so that it doesn't flap because then it could come out of focus. Okay, now I'll show you how to load the camera. Now let's put just a little bit of wind in this camera. Now the reason I like to, when I'm loading the camera, only put a little bit of wind in because maybe I'm not gonna shoot right now. And I don't wanna leave the spring wound up because that's not good for the camera. In order for me to show you how to load this camera, I'm gonna put it on 16 frames per second. So it goes a little slower. You just have to remember to turn this back to the speed that you would like to shoot it on. Okay, now I'll show you how to load the camera. Here is my unexposed film. I also want to show you that there's these arrows inside and those arrows point to the direction that your film wants to go. You want the film to be coming off like a nine with the sprocket holes close to the camera which line up with the sprockets on these feed and take up winders. But before I try to load it, there's a couple things I need to do. So I'll put the, this on and before I put the take up spool on, you want to cut a nice angle into your film with the cutter. So right down here in the bottom is the cutter. And then make sure this little piece right here does not stay inside the camera but get it out of the way. Then close up your loop formers and then you just go ahead and feed your film into the guide. Give it a little bit of pulse and see if it takes up and if it does let it go all the way through and come out the other side. So you have something to put on your take-up spool. Inside your take-up spool, there's a little slot. Right there it is. Put it end of the film 
into the slot. Roll it up. Line up your spool onto the square and then you can torque it open. Check it. Open it up. Check it again. And then you put the door on. You have to make sure it lines up and it's completely tight before you can close and lock it. And run it again and listen to it. Don't forget to change the speed back to 24 if you, if you lowered it in order to load the camera. And then you can take note of your footage counter and you can zero your frame counter. Very nicely designed. It sounds beautiful. It's ready to go. Ready to shoot a film. Now what you'll need when you take it out to shoot is a tripod or pistol grip. You can hand hold it. Light meter. And lenses. What, so what I'd like to finish this demo up with is showing you how to put a lens onto your camera. So right now I'm just going to lock that up and keep it so that this doesn't move. And I'm going to put the lens right where I would view it. And I like the 75 telephoto lens. So I'm going to put that one on. And you just have to very carefully line it up. and then screw it in. I have my aperture and I have my focus. That's how you take off your lens. If you have a back cap, you always want to protect it. If you have a front cap, you always want to protect it. You always want to put it back into its pouch or its case and you always want to put the cap back on. You can keep your cap on there to prevent light from going in when you're not shooting. Now I'm finished with this camera, so I'm going to put the motor back in and unwind it before I put it away. I've already shot my film. I make sure I don't have any wind left in the camera. I carefully put it back in the box. I make sure all the lenses and the light meter are stowed back in the box and if I have a rewind key I also put that in. Now I'd like to just talk about this exposure time chart for a moment. This is your chart for exposure times in fractions of a second. 20 to 25 percent of the light is deflected into the viewfinder by the reflex prism. Use the adapted fractions when metering Don't forget when changing speeds to reference the exposure times so that you change your aperture on your lens to reflect the correct exposures. Now, some people don't actually do that and they like the exposure at the 165. So you might want to experiment with that and see what your preference is.
Never leave the camera fully wound. When you're done shooting and you've taken your film out, always let all the wind out of the camera. Don't forget, don't forget to change the speed back to 24 if you, if you lowered it in order to load the camera. Put it back on the setting that you want to shoot at. Don't forget, don't forget to check the variable shutter and make sure it's in the proper position when you're ready to shoot. Don't forget. Now I'm finished with this camera, so I'm going to put the motor back in and unwind it before I put it away. And here is your ground glass, and there's your shutter. I need to cut the film. And then make sure this little piece right here does not stay inside the camera, but get it out of the way. You can keep your cap on there to prevent light from going in when you're not shooting. And you always want to keep your filter holder in even if there's no filter. Close it up so no light gets in and onto your film. So you want to make sure that that stays closed. If you needed to remove the film, you could open it, but other than that, you keep that closed. Here is my dummy roll. It's unexposed film that we can give you to practice loading. Now when I was finished shooting my film, the film would be on the take-up spool, and that's what you take out and send to the lab. So when you take that out, you'll take out the take-up spool, put it back in the box, and send it to the lab. And then you can have the extra spool and put it back down for the next person. Don't forget to give that to the next person. Never leave the camera fully wound. There's, there's no wind in the camera now, so you could put it away and shoot tomorrow or later or when you see the perfect thing that you want to shoot. This can click right onto this spindle here to keep it from going around in your way. Um, and you have to line it up with the square and then push it down and then it's on there nice and tight. So this is um, now exposing all this film right here. In order to prevent that from happening, you can keep a finger on the film there so that it doesn't open up. But you'll use about that much loading, expose that much anyway. Not always easy. Don't want that to happen. I've already shot my film. I make sure I don't have any wine left in the camera. I carefully put it back in the box. I make sure all the lenses and the light meter are stowed back in the box and if I have a rewind key I also put that in and I'm ready to go shoot a movie. So thank you very much.